folks uh, not too much focus on our company or our products per se, but on, in particular, uh, high performance processing, uh, picking up where Javier left off. Um, a brief introduction to who we are. Uh, Azavi, I'm with Azavi, I'm the founder and CEO there. Uh, we're what's known as a B Corporation. Uh, how many here, people here have ever heard of a B Corporation? A couple of folks. This is a new type of corporate form in the United States. Uh, in the UK, it would be known as a social enterprise. Uh, here in the US, uh, it's in place in about uh, something known as a benefit corporation structure is in place in about 25 states. Um, and we expect the rest will be assimilated over the next couple years. Uh, B corporations are sort of a cross between a nonprofit organization and a for profit corporation. We're a for profit company that operates with a social mission, and ours is around. Uh, working on projects that have civic and social impact, uh, as well as advancing the state of the art uh, with research. And we do that in a number of different ways, in, including uh, open source. Uh, and we've, a lot of our projects focus on land, uh, water, and people. I got into this uh, by way of, uh, I'm not a computer scientist. I didn't get into computing uh, directly. I got through this into this by way of landscape architecture. And this was my inspiration. A guy named Ian McCarg wrote a book in 1969 called Design with Nature. Uh, and a lot of early GIS technology came out of uh, people trying to automate uh, Ian McCarg's uh, design and planning process uh, with uh, weighted overlays. Uh, and this was my introduction to it as well. Uh, my uh, college professor and uh, graduate school professor in uh, uh, landscape architecture was Dana Tomlin. He wrote a book called GIS and Cartographic Modeling, and uh, this really brought me into this world. I learned GIS on command line Adrisi, uh, still uh, a system that's being developed at Clark University, uh, and in, with raster processing. Uh, the open source equivalent would be things like grass GIS. So I started Azavi about 12 years ago to try to build uh, advanced spatial analysis tools like Adrisi and grass that would run on the web, um, and found, in fact, that that was pretty darn tough to do. Um, so over the years, uh, I came to a few uh, conclusions about what was uh, getting in the way of that. Uh, the big one was uh, performance and scalability, just as Javier outlined. Uh, I also felt like user interfaces were one of the biggest challenges. And I'm not here to pick on uh, Esri per se. Uh, we get uh, pretty crummy user interfaces from lots of different uh, uh, GIS tools. But uh, the ability to uh, understand, uh, grok this user interface takes years and years of training. Uh, and a great deal of experience, and uh, didn't think it was going to be a great uh, path to move forward with. Um, uh, here are some great uh, geo portal examples that you've probably all seen online, endless tables of contents, and so on. Uh, I think we can do better. Uh, there are lots of new applications that I think would, are made possible by faster performance uh, from a whole range of different things, from online uh, business siting to simulation modeling, to uh, modeling things like sea level rise and climate change, uh, educational games, being able to actually get real-time responsiveness online in a, in a, in a game-like uh, simulation environment with real-world data, uh, transit planning, uh, travel sheds, being able to uh, process data as it streams in, uh, uh, things like social media feeds, uh, things like uh, uh, understanding how um, uh, carbon uh, is affecting the climate, crime analysis and forecasting, and so on. These are the motivators that got us involved in location tech. Uh, this is why uh, Azavia joined last fall or last summer, and um, uh, we're pretty excited about the range of projects uh, that are being uh, developed. Uh, GeoTrellis is one of them. Uh, this is a Scala-based application uh, uh, library that uses uh, Spark, HDFS, uh, and the ACA framework. Uh, this is something that our company is working on, though since we've joined Location Tech, uh, we've had lots of other contributors to it, uh, and we're pretty excited about the direction it's going. It's primarily aimed at raster processing and also supports uh, an extension for doing network, very fast network processing. Uh, second project called GeoMesa. Uh, there'll be a more detailed presentation this afternoon about both GeoTrellis and GeoMesa. GeoMesa is uh, based on the Accumulo framework, an Apache project, um, and they've extended Accumulo with spatial uh, APIs, uh, implementing a number of uh, useful APIs for uh, very fast processing of vector data. Uh, spatial Hadoop is a third project. Uh, also, I think, is this in the incubation? Yep. 
Andrew? And, and I think they've changed their name maybe to GeoGenie. Uh, I couldn't find any GeoGenie logos or, or confirmation of that, but uh, if you Google spatial Hadoop, you'll uh, find the current state of the project um, uh, very explicitly extending uh, uh, spatial uh, tools to the Hadoop framework. A little bit different from GeoTrellis, which is aimed at low latency, real-time processing uh, with things like Spark. Um, uh, this is aimed at, at more of a, a batch processing approach. And there's also some key libraries that I think are enabling a number of these uh, different tools to be tied together. Uh, one of the ones that's particularly important for us is uh, the Java Topology Suite, JTS, uh, which has also been submitted to Location Tech uh, as a project. Uh, I mentioned user interfaces earlier. Uh, uh, it's my contention that faster is not just faster. Uh, faster enables us to create very new kinds of user interfaces. I think this is going to be an incredibly important part of uh, innovation over the coming years. Uh, not just things like educational games that I mentioned earlier, but new displays and devices uh, that process spatial data but may not display a map. This is a prototype for a crime risk forecasting tool that's an overlay on top of a, uh, in Google Glass, uh, where for a police officer, as the police officer walked through a neighborhood, they would get uh, intelligence information uh, overlaid on top of the glass display. So I'm extremely excited. Uh, we are uh, moving from a time when I started my company where the kinds of things I'd wanted to do were not possible to a really diverse array of new uh, applications that are becoming possible with the tools at, look, at Location Tech. Uh, and to not just be uh, serving land, water, and people, but simulation, modeling, and forecasting. Uh, Andrew asked me to say a few words about our own experience with Location Tech uh, as we've gone through the process. Um, Javier raised a few of these issues. What are the advantages and what has that actually meant for us? Uh, uh, Javier mentioned business-friendly licenses. This specifically refers to either the Eclipse license, the Apache license, BSD, maybe MIT as well. Uh, so these are licenses that uh, don't uh, carry the GPL uh, uh, type of impact on them, but they can be incorporated into business tools by commercial companies and resold. Uh, Location Tech, uh, is, as part of the Eclipse Foundation, also brings to the table professional legal staff who do patent reviews, intellectual property reviews of all the source code that comes into the project. So that's what we're going through as each of these projects is being incubated right now. Uh, we're having professional legal staff review these things um, for any potential problems uh, and then resolve those problems if they arise. And then I think the third really impact is, is around community growth. Uh, and for our own project, GeoTrellis, uh, literally 24 hours after we changed our license, because we were a GPL project, uh, we changed it to the Apache license, uh, we had major contributor calling us up and saying we'd like to, uh, we'd like to join, our proje join the project and, and start contributing to it. Uh, it was very, uh, uh, very encouraging. Uh, we're going through what I think is uh, sometimes a a complex process of that IP review, but for a small company like ours to get patent protection for a very important project for us uh, is uh, worth a great deal. Um, and for us, we now have uh, many more contributors, uh, not just that initial call after we changed our license, but since we joined the group, many more contributors to the GeoTrellis library. So it's been incredibly important for a small company like ours uh, uh, and has had a big impact. So I want to encourage all of you uh, to consider joining uh, location tech and contributing, uh, and if not joining the organization, then at least contributing to some of these projects, I think they have a chance of having a really big impact.